St. Helena is a rugged and remote island. Its rocky ramparts rise from the southern Atlantic, nearly 2,000 kilometers off the coast of Africa. It emerged from the sea around 14 million years ago. And although it's remote, life has had plenty of time to find it and colonize it. When the first Portuguese explorers landed here in 1502, they found an island covered in vegetation. Many of the plants were unique to St. Helena. The animals, too, had evolved for so long in isolation that they were now unique to the island. Hundreds of species on St. Helena are found nowhere else on Earth. The island certainly deserves its description as the Galapagos of the Atlantic. St. Helena's natural history is special because it is so remote and its extreme isolation also proved very useful to the British in 1815 when the Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte was exiled here after his defeat at Waterloo. He lived at Longwood House until his death just six years later and by then the biological treasures of St. Helena were already under threat. There were no native mammals on St. Helena, but soon after people came, cats, rats and mice made themselves at home here and wreaked havoc on the local creatures. St. Helena had several species of unique birds, but soon most were eaten to extinction, save one now under the care of the St. Helena National Trust. For the last decade, Eddie Duff has been carefully monitoring this bird, the wirebird, a kind of plover. It nests on the ground, and with its tiny defenseless chicks, it's easy to see why ground predators had such a devastating effect. But since 2012, cats have been trapped and already, Eddie and his team have noticed a rise in the number of surviving chicks. And the removal of at least some of the cats has benefited other birds as well. St. Helena was once an important nesting ground for tropical seabirds. The rats, cats and mice haven't been completely eradicated, but their numbers have been thinned, and slowly, many of the seabirds such as this mass booby, are returning. Masked boobies occur right around the tropics, often in large noisy colonies. And here on St. Helena, they are slowly reclaiming what was once another such spectacular colony. Among the cats, rats and mice, Settlers also brought alien plants, like New Zealand flax. The flax plants now cover vast areas of the island. Many of the ridge tops and mountains are completely dominated with flax, such as here behind me. Introduced grazing animals added to the problems for St. Helena's natives. And between invasive plants and hungry mouths, St. Helena's unique plants have been forced to the most remote parts of the island. Like these scrubwood bushes, or wiped out completely. And with these plants went many species of invertebrates that depended upon them. Some of the invertebrates are extremely rare, with just a few hundred individuals, or even less of some species. Among the incredible diversity are the golden sail spider with its shining triangular abdomen, the blushing snail, the scrubwood leafhopper, 
the Hellenian brown lacewing, the common red scarab beetle, the vulture leafhopper found only along the high central ridge, and Loveridge's hoverfly. Conservation teams are working hard to restore native plants and manage habitats for rare invertebrates. And not a moment too soon. The spiky yellow woodlouse is down to its last few hundred individuals. It's one of the rarest animals on the planet. And for some, it's already too late. St. Helena had a giant earwig. Now, only a museum specimen. We still don't know the full story of St. Helena's unique invertebrates. In these remote and spectacular landscapes, new discoveries are still being made. In 2015, two new species of parasitic wasps were found. One named after the exiled Napoleon Bonaparte, I'm not sure what the emperor would have made of this honor. He hated St. Helena's isolation. But it was that same isolation that created this biological treasure house, one like no other. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini documentaries possible.